you all here so early? Hi, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you all for coming. I'll start in a minute. I just want to give everybody time to get on. It's not 7 o'clock yet. Am I frozen? No. Okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't frozen. So, I've been hearing from people and everybody seems to be prepped, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Hi, Rochelle. So, that's a good thing. So, we will get through this piece. You will love this piece. Um, for those of you who don't have the wood, you can also put the line drawing. Hi, Betty. Hi, Faith on another surface. <laughs> Hi, Virginia. So you can put it on another surface and just um, base coat the letters individually. Okay? All right, 701. Do we all need to see my face? Not really, right? Uh, we can go right in. I'm so happy you're all here. Thank you. All right, I'm not going to show you my beautiful face because it's not so beautiful tonight. But at the end of the video, I will. I'll pop on and say, hey. Okay? So here's something I will say. First, thank you all for coming. If you haven't been here with me before, just know that I try to read all the comments. I don't always get to because I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> well, thank you, Kathy. Um, if I don't answer your question, I go back at the end and I read every single one of them and I answer every single one of them. Well, I answer most of them. For everybody that's saying hello, hello. Um, I will answer you. So, I will answer everything for you, okay? And I'm going to say this. Oh, Colleen, I didn't know you were in Canada. Um, my Merry Christmas on my Facebook page tonight. I will put up the instructions so you can paint it whenever you want. Print them off. Enjoy them. If you are a teacher and you want to teach it, feel free to teach it. I ask that you don't make a profit from it. Donate the money. Um, do it just because you love your students, but have fun with it. All right, so if you normally take notes, you don't have to tonight. I will, on my Facebook, print. Okay, so let's start. You should be base coated to where I am. This piece is a little longer than normal, so... I might be out of the screen here and there. If I'm out, just tell me. I'll kind of try to move over. You are on a delay. All right, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to shade. So let's start. You can put out all your colors. We're going to need plantation pine. We're going to need purple rain. If you don't have purple rain, use lavender. You're going to use Heritage Brick, and you're going to use Mermaid Tail. Now, keep in mind, and a couple people have asked me, they've been commenting and stuff, can they use different colors? Absolutely, you can use different colors. Where I use purple, you could say, oh, I want pink. Base coat in a medium value and shade in a darker value. It is not a problem to change colors. Okay. So, don't make yourself crazy on that. Do what makes you happy. Okay. So, I put out a little plantation pine. I put out a little bit of purple rain. I put out a little of heritage brick. And I put out a little bit of mermaid tail. 
Mermaid Tail and Laguna are newer colors. But they're so pretty. They're so pretty. All right, so we're going to take a floating brush. At least... I use a 14 chisel blender, which is a short flat. Um, yes, you can use plum. Yes. Um, the shorter the bristles are, the easier it is to control. So that's a really good thing. So, be it my beginner class, I'm going to go through your floating. When you float, I use scrap paper. I use paper towel and my brush. So, at the end of the class, I'll show you next week's, uh, next, I'll show you next week's class and I'll show you next month's class. Alright, so we wet. When you wet, you will see a shine on your bristles. It might be a little hard to see. This is the fat, the chisel edge of your brush. Um, Patty, one second. This is your ferrule and this is your handle. Okay, the middle part is your ferrule. So you're going to wet four steps. Wet, blot, load, blend. You're going to wet. You're going to blot. You're going to blot flat. And you're going to watch the shine go from the chisel edge to the ferrule. As soon as it stops, lift it. Okay, that will leave you with enough moisture in your brush. Okay. Uh, Patty, turquoise could be uniform blue. And it could be um, antique teal. It could be deep midnight blue. That's why I told people turquoise. Turquoise is real easy to have a shading color. So wet, blot, corner load. Now I'm as close to the paint pedal as I can. I try not to be on a diagonal. If I'm on a diagonal, you tend to get a lot of paint across your brush. And then I'm going to blend, and I'm going to blend flat. So small strokes until I have a graduation of color. I am not doing this. This is wrong. Okay? If you see when I do this, all these skip marks are because the water is out of the brush. So you need wet, blot, and if you don't remember that, write that down and say it every time. Okay? Now I'm going to work upside down because I have to. So, wet, blot, corner load, blend. You blend until you have a graduation of color, very small strokes. Now, always move your piece so your piece is more comfortable. Don't try to move your hand so your hand is more comfortable. You want your piece to be more comfortable. We're going to shade the right side of each letter. So my paint is towards the right side. Go as far as you can. Now, what I did, this wood is hard. I'm not going to lie. I don't want you doing this. You will have, see those choppy strokes? You don't want that. You want a nice, smooth stroke. Now you can go from bottom to top or top to bottom. In this case, it doesn't matter. If you need to mop, don't move the paint. It's just very lightly up and down. Now. That's all right. But look at the rest of your letter. There's more brights. Okay. Here's a right. Here's a right. And if you're running out of paint, reload. Wet, blot load, blend, and start down here again. Okay. And here's a right. Make sure I'm not off. So 
So when you're doing something, you have to remember when you say right, it's not only the furthest right, it could be there are sections of right. Okay. So let's put that there. And you should be able to see. So now I've done all my right sections, all my right sides, right, 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 right. We're going to do the same thing with our E in Purple Rain or Lavender. Either is fine. And if you have any questions, just ask me. I am happy to help you. Usually I'm pretty nice, too. Not always. Sometimes. Okay. Now that was too wet. So you see how I have, it's kind of runny. That was because it was too wet. And that's because my paint is very wet. I'm not really sure why. I probably didn't shake it enough. And that's just me being lazy. So, we'll just shake it and redo. Okay, so, wet, blot, load, blend. Yeah, I'll redo here. That's better. Okay. Now, if you're not painting, like if you're going to paint this without me, then what I, I do, because I'm lazy, we all know this, I paint like I'm messy and then I'll just touch up the letters as I go. But if you're painting with me, so I did the M and then I base coated the E and then I did the E and then base coated the R because I'm lazy and I don't want to be neat but tonight you're painting with me so be neat unless I'll have to yell okay now remember what I said your rights hi Marie your rights are here here and here and everybody are anybody painting with me I of course would love to see your pieces And I thank you all for coming and spending your time with me. I don't always, well, no, I do always say that because I mean it. Especially in December. December is so hard. But I appreciate it. Okay. Here's a fun fact. I used to take off in December. No, I haven't in years. But I used to. All right, now the R, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move to the Heritage Brick. And be sure you pull enough water out of your brush. And we're going to do, and I know that I'm not right side up, but I can't get it. My hand will be in your way if I, I can paint upside down, but my hand will be in your way and you won't be able to see. The whole right side. I'm up here. And you'll see it's starting to add dimension. The reason that we use a darker color is to make the item recede. So now our letter doesn't look flat. Parts of it are going down. Okay. So then I'm here. We're on the right side. And we're here. And I always, if you watch what I'm doing, this is floating, I always, I, if I stop here or I don't like here, I don't come in and start here. I always start from down here and pull up. Okay? And then you will see I do mermaid tail. And mermaid tail on the Laguna, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a really, really pretty, pretty color. Yeah, this is it before it goes on. So this is, this is plantation pine. This is purple rain. This is heritage brick. This is mermaid tail. It's a really, really 
pretty, pretty color. So then I'll come in and I'll do the right side. Now, and you could use this with the turquoise. Um, I don't know that I would because this has got a lot of teal in it versus the blues. Not that teal's not blue, but teal's got a lot of green in it. So with the turquoises, I would go uniform, uh, deep midnight blue, Williamsburg, any of those. Turquoise is a really easy color to find a shading color for. And remember, shading is floating a darker color. Highlighting is floating with a lighter color. And that's how we create our dimension. This is a really fun piece. There's floating in it. So you'll learn floating, you'll learn dry brushing, we'll learn how to add some areas of interest, so our stripes. And, and when we get to that part, feel free to do whatever you want. If you don't want polka dots, don't do polka dots. You can change your colors. Most people don't, but feel free to. And this is a great find at the Dollar Tree. See how pretty that looks? So now what I have done is I have floated with the darker value of the colors. So when I float, I tend, not, not I tend, I do. I base in the medium value, I highlight in the lighter value, and I shade in a darker value. And that gives us our dimension when we add it all together. So here's my medium. Yes, the shading colors are plantation pine on the green, lavender or purple rain on the purple, heritage brick on the red, and mermaid tail on the teal. So you tend to kind of, so, okay, so base and medium, highlight and light, shade and dark. Always in the same family. So when we say values, that's what we mean. A value of the same color. Technically, no, not technically. Colors run in values. So usually it's very light, highlight, light, medium, dark, very dark, low dark. Okay. But here we're going to, we stick with medium, base coat, highlight, which will be our light, and dark. For our shadows for our shades so that'll give us a lot of life so we go from this to this and you can see I've already added some dimension to it okay okay so now we're gonna dry brush now I use a mezzaluna I use it I use it all the time and I use it in a different way than a regular dry brush. If you don't have a mezzaluna and you want to use a white bristle brush, that'll work. If you want to use a stencil brush, that'll work. If you want to use a sable, you can do it, but you have to be careful because I don't want you to ruin that brush. Okay, so this is a mezzaluna. It is a dry brush. <laughs> it's made of natural and synthetic hairs. It's very good in the fact that it is the only dry brush that I use that you can wash in between colors, which is not the norm. Normally you have to switch brushes. So I'm going to use warm white. Now, as for warm white, I only use warm white. I don't like titanium white. If you have titanium white, feel free to use it. There is nothing wrong with it, just not a color I use. Not even a color I own. 
So my brush is dry. I'm going to pick up white. And there's a, there's a decent amount on there. I'm going to take my paper towel, the dry part of your paper towel. I'm going to put it, pinch, and pull off the excess. So there's just a little bit of paint on there. When you use this paint, this brush, up down, straight up and down, okay, we're going to dry brush, Jeez, this piece is an odd shape, up and down, I'm on the tips of my bristle, and I'm dry brushing the center. Now, can you see those lines? Let me get some more so you can see them. Okay. There are lines there. See that? Oh, yeah, good. You can. I want that. Now, normally, when we dry brush, we follow the shape of what we're in. On this piece, I didn't. Like, I'm not going to take my brush and go this way and this way and the E this way. Everything... Is vertical so I'm here I'm here and I'm still vertical I'm in the center let's see what I'm doing my strokes are still up and down okay reload when you need but my strokes keep your brush so that top and bottom it's always facing the top. It's always facing the bottom. It is never on a diagonal on this piece. Okay. Here. And then I'm going to come here. I'm going to bump over to my E. And I did just post on my Facebook tonight, next week's class. I got kind of confused, which I do. For some odd reason, I thought it was two weeks and a day away, but it's not. So I'm a little bit behind the ball, so I'm sorry, but I posted it tonight. And if you don't have the piece, if you didn't get it at Dollar Tree when I said go get it, because you didn't listen, um, you can trace out pa uh, Santa I put the line drawing in the comments it will stay there until the day of class and then I take it out of the comments you can just put Santa on anything it doesn't have to be on the slide you can put his face on anything okay and remember I'm you see those strokes? They're not following the direction of the letter. They're up and down. They are in the center of each section. Do not, please do not, make your letters all white. You don't want to, you don't want to go from edge to edge because then you don't have a highlight. You've just changed the color of your piece. I want the center of my letters to have the appearance of coming up. Okay, so I'm here. And then I'm here. And it's easy, if you just keep your hands straight, you'll remember. It's not normally, it's not my norm when I dry brush this one I wanted to. Okay, so I'm here. If anybody has any questions, just type away. I have been checking them. I will answer you. And if I answer you and you don't understand, ask me again and again and again. I am more than happy to answer until you get it. I don't have an issue with that. Okay? So you see what we just did? You can clean out your brush.
and just pinch it dry. Cleaned it with water and now I'm just pinching it dry. We're going to use it again. I'm going to bump right on over here. Now I'm going to use antique white. I know some of you didn't have antique white. There were comments use whatever you used on the antlers okay so if you used light mocha use light mocha if you used whatever you used and if all else fails take the base coat color which is sable brown and add some warm white to it so you will have a lighter value than our medium we based in our medium we're going to dry brush and highlight in our light which is a lighter brown and then we're going to shade in a darker color. Okay, so that didn't want to come off. We're gonna load our brush. We're gonna pinch so we have a little bit of paint on there. Oh, thank you, Peggy. Me too. I love the combination of them. And it's not the red, green, red, green. But you could do it in, like, very Christmassy colors. But I thought that these were real fun. And we're going to dry brush up and down. Same thing. Don't change what we did. And when you dry brush, this is really, really important. And we're just going to dry brush the center of his face. This is really important. so important I forgot. Hmm. Oh, when you dry brush. Don't dry brush. Okay, so let me just show you something. I'm going to show you on the back of this. If we want a nice dry brush, look, I've just done this about 15 times to get this color. What I see people do is just put a lot more paint and go like this. But you see the difference? Then you don't have a light and airy dry brush. Dry brushing is meant to slowly build up. I promise you, and I always keep my promises, if you listen to me and you take your time, you will find that your pieces look much better than if you try to rush it, okay? Rushing something is not going to give you the look you want. Same thing with base coating. I say base coat in nice, even strokes. So oh, I'll show you in the, when we do the nose. When you base coat, you don't want to lump it on because you don't want those lumps. They don't go away. Same thing as if you dry brush like this. It doesn't go away. Take your time. Okay? Take your time. Sable brown or whatever you painted your reindeer. I think sable's a pretty common color. But whatever you painted his face is what you're going to shade the antlers with. If I'm going too fast for anybody, just tell me, for anybody who's painting with me, I think I'm going okay. But if, I'm, if I am, just let me know. Okay, so we're going to go back to floating. Wet. Blot. Corner load. Blend. Small strokes. Brush perfectly flat. Remember, all the bristles on all the surface all the time. And if you need me to show you something twice, just tell me. I'm going to shade the outside edge of the antlers. Okay. I want to make them rounded. Brush is perfectly flat. Don't do this. If you do this with your brush, you're not going to have a graduation of color. You have to remember the reason we float to create dimension is we want 
that graduation of color. Okay, that's really, really important. We want to have a graduation of color. Okay. Now we're going to walk away from the antlers for a second. Simply because we need drawing time. Now, when you're floating, if I come in and I float this edge, probably off the camera, if I float this edge, I'm going to go here and I'm going to pull this off. Okay? I don't want to pull this off. So it has to be dry. And to tell if it's wet, look at it on an angle and you can see if it's got a shine. If it's got a shine, then it's still wet. So, instead of waiting, which if you're painting on your own, you can. I'm just going to bump down here and work here. Okay? And we'll flip-flop back and forth. So you need burnt umber. So we're going to go to a darker value of our base coat. Okay. Everybody who just came in, hi. Thank you for coming. Thank you for spending a December night with me. Okay, same thing. Wet blot load blend. Now, I want to shade the bottom half of his face. So think of where his cheeks are going to be. About the middle of his face. And that's where I'm going to start my float. And I'm going to come around. If I could see, we'd be okay. I make it so you can see, and then I can't see. And we're going to come here. Now, I started here. You should never do that. But I didn't have enough paint. So that's okay if you go back now, reload, because you can see. You see where I stopped and where I started. And then I'll just come in with one float and clean it up. And that's how you fix that. And sometimes you just don't have a choice. The shading on the antlers is sable brown or whatever color you use to base coat your reindeer's face. So when you do a design, okay, from a design standpoint, and this is something you should all know, not the designing part, but you have to pull your colors together. So you don't just randomly throw colors in, which some people do, but you, you, you should, really shouldn't. So I don't randomly throw colors in. So my, I use my sable here. When I, design, when I do my designs on here, I'll use all of these colors to pull it all back together. Okay? So when I dry brushed here, I use the same color here. And it's more to pull your colors together so that your eye doesn't all of a sudden say, oh my goodness, what is that? Okay? It's a normal flow of a design. Okay? And that's really important. Okay, so, while this is drying, and I just put my hand in it, we are going to shade the bottom of the ears. The bottom of the ears is where they go into the face. So it's right here. See where they're going into the face? That's what we want. We want to go, so if you drew that line, it's right above that line. And that is going to pull the face up and push the ear behind it. Um, okay, so a good sub for Laguna is Peacock Teal, if you have Mermaid Tail. If you don't have Mermaid Tail, use Turquoise.
this is Laguna. It's a real pretty color. Uh, peacock teal will be on the teal side, which has green in it. And turquoise will have more blue in it. But it'll depend on your shading color. You know what that tells me, Carolyn? That you're not base coated. <laughs> Poor. Okay. I have to say I'm very impressed. I had people messaging me and commenting that they were, what's this color and what's this color? So I know everybody was base coating their little hearts out today. So you'll have this piece done for Christmas or for a gift. I have to tell you something. I'm not a dollar store shopper. But when they get these pieces in, they're great for gifts. They're great for teacher gifts. They're great for bus driver gifts. They're great for everything. And they are inexpensive. And nobody would know it. You wouldn't look at that and say, oh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll take it back. Yeah, Peacock Teal is very close. If not, go to Desert Turquoise and then um, shade with Deep Midnight Blue or Uniform Blue. All right, so we shaded here and we shaded here. Now, while that dries, we're going to go back to the Sable and we're going to do the tips, just the tips of the, the inside tips of the antlers. It's a little bit wide. And every step you will see, every step we do, pulls this together. Okay? Our January piece will be a Dollar Tree surface, too. Not February, but January. <laughs> I can hear you laughing. Can you see me smiling? <laughs> You guys all make me so happy. Make my heart happy. Make my paintbrushes happy. I'm very lucky I can do what I love. So now I'm going to look at my piece on an angle. Because now I'm going to go back to my face. And I'm going to this. Oh, Sylvie, I'm sorry you're sick. Feel better. And I'm going to, now remember what I said, dark makes the item recede, light brings it towards us. So here is the top of his ear, here, here is the inside of his ear. So I want to push the inside of the ear down. I'm going to float with my paint towards the antlers, the inside of his ears. And you see what I just did? Now he has... An inner ear and it was really just a simple float so sometimes when you look at things they're just simple techniques that will bring your piece to life that float just totally changed that ear okay so we went from this well, you can't tell there's an inner ear to this. Let me see if they both come up on screen. You guys are on a delay. So I, I am seeing it. I'm doing it before you. And sometimes I have to wait. So do you see how I just one float, just one float changed that to look like that. So now I have a top of an ear and I have an inner ear. One float. Okay. 
I don't normally have a second piece. But I do, so it works. Okay. Now, we're going to flip upside down so your hand is comfortable. Remember, always our hand is comfortable as opposed to our brush being comfortable. And we're going to float the bottom of our antlers because we're pushing them under the ears. Now, I know sometimes you all get sick of hearing my voice. But, if I tell you why we do things, and you understand why we do it, it will help you when you're doing other things. You'll say, oh, dark goes there so that I, because I'm pushing that down. And that is the ultimate goal, is that you can look at it and understand why you're doing what you're doing. That's really important. Although I have to tell you a funny story. I was away this weekend and I was with my father and he told me I talk way too much. And I said, when I'm teaching on Facebook Live, I just talk and talk and talk because nobody can stop me. <laughs> so, you'll have to hear my voice even more. Okay. So, now we've got dimensional antlers. Remember what I said? We went from here to here. And we went from here to here. Two, two techniques. We dry brushed and we added three floats and we went from here to here. One, three floats, three separate spots. We went from here to here. You see that? So now we're going to highlight the reindeer with antique white or whatever. Uh, the base of the antlers are highlighted or shaded. Okay, Valerie, they're shaded because we're pushing them down under the ears. So the paint is towards the ear. We're in sable brown and we're shading the bottom of the antlers. Okay. So now we're going to highlight. And if you used graphite versus carbon paper, if you use carbon paper, you're probably going to have a big fat mess. Use graphite and it will erase. Okay. We're going to highlight. in antique white, or whatever your antlers are. We're gonna highlight the top, paint is up on both of these floats. The top of the ear, the top of the outer ear. The top of the head, just the top of the head. I'm not going down far enough to meet the shading. It's just the top of the head. And I would do both ears first because you'll pull this off. So she highlight the top of the ear, the top of the ear, and then the top of the head. He's really starting to come to life, isn't he? So cute. That was a water break. Okay, so let's dry brush some cheeks. Maybe. Tuscan Red. Now, if you don't have Tuscan Red, use any red you have. Use whatever red you're going to base coat your nose with. It's fine. I just use Tuscan Red because it's a really nice, deep red. But any red is fine. When I dry brush cheeks, 
I like to use stencil brush. Mm -mm. Okay, I have a big one. You can use a much smaller one. It might make you feel a little better. Uh, oh, you know what? I have a smaller one. Mm, no, I don't. Okay. So, I'm going to be really careful. This brush, another really good brush. It's nice and soft. It's synthetic. You can use, excuse me, you can use hand sanitizer in between colors in the middle of a class. I'm going to put a little bit of paint on my brush. And you'll do much better with a smaller one. And scrub. Really scrub. This brush is scrubbable. I am putting pressure. See the pressure on there? And I'm scrubbing till there's almost nothing. If you have this much paint on there, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a really heavy dry brush, which you don't want. Some scrubbing and then I'm gonna lightly come in I'm gonna scrub his cheeks my cheeks will probably be bigger than yours do you see that I'm gonna do the other side too my cheeks will be bigger than yours because my brush is much bigger than yours we're gonna scrub you see that okay and then I'm gonna do the other side Just make sure they're pretty close in size. And there are my cheeks. Beautiful cheeks. Okay, remember what I said. Nice, light, dry brushing. If when you're painting, you say, oh, that's not dark enough, or oh, I want more, or whatever. Fourth coat, a fifth coat. A new English word. Do not ever try to do it in one coat. This is patience. You will get a beautiful dry brush. You can wash your brush. Okay, now we're going to paint some facial features. Lamp black. I don't want you to put your hand in your nose. Lamp black. You only need a little bit. I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you to use a liner, you probably feel better. So you need a liner and like a number two. Now when I paint eyes, I happen to love eyelashes and I love all of that stuff. And take, now when you use a liner, go from the water to the paint and pull. Now here's something that's really, and I'm going to explain it to you. Usually I, it's a visual thing. Don't turn your brush like this in the paint. Because what happens is, it's like when you take your finger at the root of your hair and you twirl it. You're breaking your hair at your head. If you're doing this and turning in your paint, you're breaking your, br your bristles at the ferrule. And you don't want to do that. So if you need to turn, go from your water to your paint, lift and turn, lift and turn, lift and turn, lift and turn. I promise you, if you take care of your brushes, they'll last you a very long time. Okay? You just have to pay attention to how you take care of your brushes. So when I do my eyes, I line, I line, maybe, it's not enough water. When my paint's not coming off, there's not enough water in there. Okay, there we go. Line. This brush has really got to go. Okay, hang a minute. I need a different brush. This one is just not doing it. I pulled all the bristles from it. Okay. I'll do this one. Okay. What? Then the paint. I line. I come in. And it doesn't matter if you go, in this case, top to bottom. 
it'll matter when we do our eyelashes, but for right now it doesn't matter. I'm going to line the bottom. I'm going to line the bottom line. And I'm going to line the outside of my eyes. That's how I always do my eyes. I'm going to line my eye and line the side of my eye. I'm going to take a small flat I think I put on the list a two flat. Take a two flat. And I'm going to fill it in. Are you all keeping up with me? Are you all painting with me? Make me so happy. In here. And here. Now, depending on how fast you work, you can reload your liner to do your lashes. Or you can just pull from your paint. I kind of just pull from my paint. So here he has little lashes. Now, where you paint your brush, put your brush, is the heaviest part of your stroke. So pull from the eye. Okay? Now let me just say something. There you go. If you use your brush straight up and down, you'll get a nice thin line. If you lay your hand back, you're going to get a thicker line. Neither way is wrong. They're both right. It's just different circumstances than what you're looking for. Same thing when you're here. When you pull your lashes, pull them with the eye line from the eye line. Okay. So you see how I'm following the eye line? And I'm pulling them from the eye line. My brush is straight, so it's, it's probably totally upside down. Looks a little weird with that nose, huh? He's getting there. If you have old brushes you don't want, don't throw them away. If you give them to the, not that they can use them now, but if you give them to the teen department at the library, they're so appreciative because they can use them. Or give them to a kid you know, or bring them to the school art department. No matter how old our brushes get and how we don't need them anymore, they work really, really well for the kids. So always, always think, let them do it okay so we have all of this done we're gonna come in and your nose should be on okay when I do my nose I have a circle template which I love and we're going to oh we're gonna go with this one and when I do my designs and I and I draw, I always use my circle template because then it, and you'll have it on yours, on your piece, so you don't have to worry about that. We're going to come in with a small flat, two flat, take your red, whatever red it may be, and I'm thin coats. So you see how thin I am? I'm pulling nice thin coats. I'm not this. Because all those lumps, I don't know if you can see them, all those lumps will stay there forever. They will dry just like that. And you will not be happy. And I will not be happy. 
Okay. And I want you to be happy. And my nose just lost its circle. <laughs> I've got this terrible glare on my piece. I can paint a circle. But I have this terrible glare on my piece because I need the lights on so you can see well. So that's why. Okay, so we're going to let that dry because we're going to need another coat. And in the meantime, we're going to start decorating. So keep in mind what I said before. We need to pull all our colors in. So you don't have to do what I do. You just have to do the colors I do. You don't have to do the colors I do on each piece. Like I have green here, you can have green here. But bring all your colors together so that there's a purpose to them. So I use scarlet here. Okay. I use, okay, Patty, I use Tuscan Red. If you don't have Tuscan Red, Santa Red will work, Tomato Red will work. Any red is fine. Don't go to Scarlet. Scarlet, okay, so let me show you the difference. Here is Tuscan Red. Here is Scarlet. So you don't want an orange nose. But any red will work. So I have a two flat. And for this, this is so easy, and I love this design. I'm just going to come in, lay my brush, and pull. Lay my brush and pull. I'm just putting little, they're not necessarily squares because I'm not making them perfectly square. And I'm just changing the direction. I'm just moving my brush this way and that way and this way. There's no rhyme or reason to how I lay my brush. Now, if you don't like these, don't do them. Do something else. You can do, I know they're hashtags, because I'm old, we used to call them tic-tac-toes. So, we're here, we're here, we're here, and we're here. Okay. So now, in the time that I've done that, you're welcome. My red has dried, so I'm just going to go put another coat on my red so when we get there, it'll be ready. Now, I hop all over the place so that we have drying time. You don't have to do that. You can do your entire nose and then move to here. and do, Or you can do the entire M. Whatever makes you happy, that's how you should do it but I have no choice when we're working here. On my E, I'm going to use stripes of Laguna. Now, here's something that's really important because I find that people really struggle with stripes. They struggle with squiggles. They struggle with a lot of things because they don't use their brush properly. So, when people do a stripe, a squiggle, a line, they anchor their hand and they move the brush. So I'm here. Use this part of your hand and move your whole hand. So instead of this, I'm doing this and you'll get a much straighter line. Okay, it's a big difference. This doesn't have to be perfectly straight. What color what on the Mary? Diane. So if you need, if you, if you struggle to have, if you mean the M on the Mary Diane, the checks are scarlet. If you struggle and you have to have a perfectly straight line, take a ruler and draw a line. Another thing people do that's not correct. 
they'll draw a line. I did have a watercolor pencil. They'll draw a line. I'll do two of them. And they'll take their brush and they'll go right down the middle and they'll never get a straight line. Always go to the left or to the right. That's not straight either, but I didn't draw it straight. So when you're doing plaid, same thing. Draw your lines and then, yes, yeah, Scarlet Diane. Then go next to it. But I'm just gonna pull, but you're still pulling with this part of your hand. So you're still doing this whole motion. Okay, so I'm here. And watch, I'm just doing the whole line. Okay, it's a little closer than I would have wanted, but it is what it is. And then I'm gonna go here, here, and here. I hate that. So if you do something that you don't like, if you move fast enough, use a Q-tip from the dollar store because they have less cotton, and just damp and take it off. Now I'm taking it off because it's in the wrong place, it's way too far over. So it'll drive me crazy. Because then I'd have to put another one. It would turn too blue. Laguna. Laguna stripes on the blue. On the purple. On the E. Hmm. Okay, so let's start over here. Here, and I'm pulling. That's better. Okay. I'm there. Now I'm thinning my paint with water. Hi, B. And then I'm here. And then I'm here. And I'm here. Okay, so I put my stripes in. I'm going to flip over to my second R and I'm going to use either purple rain or lavender and I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to do them diagonal. B and everybody else, the video will be up on the library website. If you go to the, when you go on to the website, wait a minute, I'll finish that thought in a second. You go diagonal, your first stroke. On your second stroke, you're just gonna move down, but you're following the same stroke. So I'm here, and my brush is following this direction. So, try to stay in purple and not red. I guess I changed the color. <laughs> so, If you go on the library's Facebook page and you go on the, okay, so this is what I'm going to tell you. Go on the live tab and scroll down. I don't know how long it's there for. After it's there, at some point, they'll move it under the events tab. Now, I don't know how long they stay. I haven't looked in a while but as of a little while ago we've been doing them online since COVID so since April and they are all there so there's two a month that have not been taken off they've just moved from the live tab to um, the events tab so that's where it'll be. Okay. Now, 
Now, we're going to take foliage green, and we're going to be really careful with our hands as we work over here. We're going to take, okay, so now I'm going to use a stylus. A stylus has a wooden handle, or they have, some of them have loose side handles. If you go to Sally's, they have really pretty ones because they're for, they label them for nails, but they've been in painting forever. You can use a toothpick. You can use the handle of a brush. So don't get caught up in not having one. And I'm just going to take the green on there. I'm just going to make some dots. They can be big. They can be small. They can be anything you want. Okay. Now the only thing I want you to be is to be careful that you don't lay your hand in it because you'll smudge them. And if you smudge them, take a damp Q-tip and take them off. But try not to smudge them. Which is why I didn't put them in before we put the stripes in. There is definitely a method to the reason I do the, the things in the order and in the way I do them. And by the time we get back here, they should be dry enough to, you wouldn't have to worry about them. And you could have as many as you want. Dots are foliage. So we put checks of scarlet on the M. We put vertical lines, vertical stripes of Laguna on the E, dots of foliage green on the first door, and diagonal stripes of purple rain or lavender on the R. Now, every one of those colors have been used before. The scarlet was used to base the red, the Laguna was used to base the R, the foliage was used to base the M, and the lavender or purple rain was used to shade the purple. I started with purple petal, but it just wasn't bright enough. It didn't jump at me, and that's why I switched from that. But we've just pulled the whole thing together. Okay, so now we need white and we need heritage brick heritage brick and you should have a little bit of lamp black out whoops okay so we are going to float bottom of the eyes in warm white. Now I stay off the edge of the eye. If you go on the edge of the eye, you can just, with your liner, bring the black back in. So don't worry about that. Come in. Wet, blot, load, blend. And I'm going to do follow the shape of the eye. I'm just going to give it a highlight. And that just changed the whole eye. I'm going to take... Okay, so now I want you to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to shade the bottom of the nose. I'm going to put some Heritage Brick on my brush right on the corner. I'm going to put just a little bit of Lamp Black on my brush. Can you see that? Just a little. And when I blend, I'm going to blend. Oops. Now when I have this, there's too much water in my brush. So I'm just taking the water end of my brush and dabbing it on the paper towel and then blending. Okay. So I'll come in. Now if it's too black, add more red. And I'm going to float the bottom 
of my nose. I am touching the bottom of my nose. I don't want to leave an area. We're going to come in, take your liner, and we're going to smudge a shine. Now, I know some people just put a dot. I never put a dot because it's not natural. And I just come in and I scrub a smudge. I don't care if it's left. I don't care if it's right. Make sure it's on the left or the right. Or else it'll be cross-eyed. Okay. Then. So you have everything painted so he you should look just like this now we're going to come in and i know i put an identipen on the list i think i put or a sharpie you can use a sharpie be careful with a sharpie when you varnish sharpies run so spray it first so that you don't have um, a big fat mess. And if you see, look, I'm, I'm just wiggling. I'm not, I don't have one straight line. I'm coming in. This marker is terrible, isn't it? It's because I don't generally use them. So, your line is not this. It's not this. It's this. There's no specific distance in them. They're just a distance. If you're more comfortable using a liner, you're going to pick up your black with your liner, and you're going to do exactly the same thing. And you're going to go here on all your letters. You're also going to line all your designs. And I'll use a marker, otherwise you'll be here with me till midnight. Which wouldn't be such a bad thing now, would it? When I line my checks, I line my checks, I line my dots, my diagonal stripes, I do the same thing. The vertical, the vertical stripes on my E are dash marks. So they're this. Okay, they are not touching the edge. Same thing with everything else. Look, my circle is outside. Okay, so you see how that's not touching? That's not touching. That's not touching. Okay, I don't want them touching the edge. They're not touching the edge. Okay, so they're here. And they're here. And they're here. Now this should go relatively quickly. Okay. And we're here till 8.30, so we're okay. All we have left is to add some sparkle to his nose. And I'll show you, I know, liquid glass is not easy to find. But I'll do the nose and I'll show you the liquid glass on the nose. Probably about five minutes. Let's get as much of this done as we can because I know a lot of you are actually doing it. We also... I'll show you 
January's piece and I'll show you next week's piece. And I'll probably put February's piece up. Not yet, but early enough so that you can order the surface if you want because it's a newly designed piece and it's great for um, on the surface that it's a cutout. You see, I'm just kind of, I'm not thinking about it. And that's what makes this so much fun that you're just not thinking about it. Okay, just let me just let me read that again. Do you line all around the letters? Yes, I line all around the letters or underneath. No, every edge of all the letters. So even if it's falling underneath, so here, this is very obvious. I'm still here, but I'm not right on the edge so that when I do here, can you see that, Patty, and everybody else? I'm still lining it. Okay. I know it's a tough, because um, it's a long piece. My January piece, which I'll show you next week, is on fabric. I did it on a large pillow, but I'm going to demo on a canvas bag so that you can see more of what I'm doing. And I'll tell you next week, if you don't have fabric paint, you can use textile medium. But that's for the intermediate class. So we're going to stay where we are, which is bizarre for me. Because, you know, my mind wanders all over the place. I think 20 steps ahead. And you see what I'm doing? And every little step you do will just bring him to life. And this is a fun, I don't make myself too crazy. This is a step you can do when you're watching TV or, now remember, um, if you're using a Sharpie, to spray it first. I am not a spray person. You'll never hear me say, 99% of the time, you will not hear me say spray. But you can't brush on with a Sharpie because it'll run. Okay, so that's as far as I'm going to go. I'll finish my eat. And if you're ahead of me, yay. If you're not, you can keep working. But I just want to be able to get and then I didn't do anything on the antlers I didn't do anything on the reindeer so I don't want any of these marker lines on any of that okay so when you get to the R and you're here you're gonna come outside you're on the blue you see that you're not on the reindeer there is nothing on the reindeer. Okay. Okay. So now, on his nose, I used maybe Glamour Dust Sizzling Red. I love my Glamour Dust paints. Now, you can use this and then use extra fine glitter, so, but get red, 
So, let me just grab one. You can get it in the scrapbooking section at Michael's. And it would be glitter glitter, like in a tube. This is in the scrapbook section. But get the red, I didn't pull the red. Lay this on first and then sprinkle it. Now if you're gonna use liquid glass, don't do that. So I just brush it on. Wait a minute. Let me read that again. Did you put lines on each side of the diagonal lines on the Laguna Blue R? I did. Here. And they're hit or miss lines. Okay. So I'm just coming in and I'm just brushing it on. It'll go on with a little bit of a cloudy look, but it'll dry just with glitter. So when I come in, and you see my glitter? So there's my glitter. Now, optionally, okay, so you have a bunch of choices. You can leave it just like that. You can, let me get a small stylus. You can put regular glitter on it over that. You can use liquid glass. Now, if you have liquid glass, and I'll show you how to use it, the tip always clogs, so don't think you did something wrong. It just dries like that. So we just pop it every time. Take a small, small stylus. Okay. And I didn't do it on this one on purpose so that I could show you. Okay, so you just squeeze. So I'm just gonna come, make sure my camera, okay. I'm just gonna come and I'm gonna squeeze and see what a generous coat I'm putting on. And I'm gonna follow and then I'm gonna fill in. Now, it goes on white, so it's gonna look a little weird for a couple hours. It's dimensional. It's all funky. It will self-level and it will dry clear. So, let me just give you a jingle bell I did. So I did the same thing here. I went like this. Okay, wait a minute. I'll answer both of your questions in a minute. So I did this, but then it self-leveled and it dried clear. So you, I don't know if you can see the dimension. And it dried clear. Okay? That's what this will do. Totally optional. Up to you. All right. So, Debbie. The, when you use the Galaxy Glitter, the Galaxy Glitter has big chunks. To get them to look okay, you kind of got to tap it on, and then, which is fine, but then don't shade because you won't see the shading underneath it. Hang right there a minute, and let me show you something. Just pretend I'm sitting right there. So when you use galaxy glitter instead of glamour dust this is the effect you'll get okay but you see you won't see the shading here so you'll have the heavier glitter which is fine you can use that that's very pretty all right now Jessica, I definitely want to start doing this. What kind of paint do I need? I use acrylic paint. I use DecoArt acrylic paint. We paint twice a month. Right now, we're on the library's Facebook page until we're back in person. We've been here for almost a year. So, welcome. 
come paint with us. Any questions you have, comment, pop off a message to the library. They will get in touch with me and I will be happy to answer. Or send me a direct message. I'm happy to answer. When I go back in and comment after class, for some reason I come up at the library as the library. I don't know how to change that, but it's me. I am doing the answering. So any questions you have, I will answer you. Um, you're welcome. Patty, can you use red glamour dust and liquid glass over that? Yes, that's what I did. But the red glamour dust is liquid. Okay, so they don't have red um, ultra fine glitter. They have they have gold and clear. Okay, you can get in the scrapbook section ultra fine. It's dry glitter. The answer to liquid glass over that is no, because it kind of flakes off. Can I show you what again? I'm having trouble with the ears. What's my name? <laughs> so cute. <laughs> my name is Linda. That was cute. The ears. <laughs> dark here. Dark here. Dark here. Dark here. Light here. Light here. Okay? And I did do the red here. So that's what I used for this. All right, so now I'm going to show you next week's. Now, next week is intermediate, so I will quickly go over floating. I will not go over floating. You need a rake. This is our piece, dollar store piece again. Okay, liquid glass, a lot of people are out of it. Maureen Baker sells it. DecoArt sells it. Um... I don't know if they have it though, but it could be, you could do it six months from now and your piece will still look finished. So don't worry about that. And once they have it in stock, I'm not kidding, buy it because it's like the best thing. I use it all the time. And that's how I know nobody has it because my students keep telling me they don't have it. Every class I give, they tell me that. So here's your piece. I did not fill in the wood slots. Here is the piece where I added a piece of boa and I filled in the wood slots. Um, I don't have, oh yes I do. This is what it looks like at the dollar store. Okay, and this is what we're gonna make him look like. All right, so you can do it either way, up to you. Okay, I don't like these lines in it, it drives me crazy, but that's a personal thing, people like them. So you can do that. January, since I'm sending you all to the dollar store anyway, hope they have it. Listen, if they don't have it, don't keep messaging me they don't have it because I have no control over what they have and what they don't have. Ask them. See if you can get some friends and order it together. They sell them online in bulk or just do it on something else. Okay, so this is January. This is their plain let it snow piece. I used a one and a half inch disc and a two and a half inch wooden disc. I did some snow, I did some glitter, I did some stenciling. It's a lot to learn in this. We're gonna float, we're gonna stencil. I added, I used gesso, is what I actually used. I used Deco Arts gesso for the snow and then I glittered it. And we're going to play with that. I'll show you how to get these lines. Right. So this is January for our beginner class. That class is who knows when. I'll tell you when it is. You're probably going to get really mad. But January 28th. It's a long time away. So that's January. All right. I'll pop you around. You can see my beautiful painting face. Oh, maybe not. Rotate your phone. You can't turn your phone while recording. Okay, wait, let's see. Ah, there I am. All right, so I just want to say I have a very Merry Christmas. Next week's class is Tuesday. So 
it's Tuesday and it's this, the Santa. I want to say, if I don't see you, have a very nice Christmas. Thank you all for being with me. If you need me, you'll know where to get me. Put up next week's on my Facebook. I put the line drawing. <laughs> there I am, Kathy. <laughs> I feel like I haven't done anything all day, which I have. I've been working my little patootie off. All right. So thank you all for coming. Merry Christmas. Um, hopefully I'll see you all next week. And that's where I'm off.